Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. It has been two months since we started with Starlink and um, I couldn't be happier. We've got some amazing speeds, you know, up into mid 200s, like uh, 260 megabits per second. Fantastic speeds, um, great upload speeds, zero complaints from me. So it's been the two months, it's time to get that Starlink dish, dishy, make flat face. I think that's what they're calling it. Get that off my deck, get out of my way, get it up on my tower and uh, we'll make a mount for it and some pretty simple stuff. Some uh, angle iron, some tubing, a little bit of welding. You don't have to do any welding. You can bolt it all together if you want to or how you do it. That's up to you. Anyway, let's, um, let's get cracking on that and uh, see how it turns out. So this is the deal. This is where we're putting that dish. <clears throat> Not down here, but way up here, way up here. I gotta climb up there, up to that tower. So that tower was another 15 feet taller with an aerial at the top. Removed all that, made a plate, capped it. I wonder what it looks like up there. Let's have a look. Here we are, highest point on Bagot Corner. <laughs> Here's the tower. Stops there. Like I said, went way up there. So the reason I'm picking this is because there are no obstructions above where I'm going to put the dish. No trees, no wires, nothing. So made that cap. I'm not going to show you how to make a cap. Come on, you guys, you can make a cap. So what I'll end up doing is mounting the horizontals straight across here. So back up a bit. Horizontals across here, there, the vertical here, and the dish basically right there. High up as possible. I want the dish to be just above that, the top. And then it's also got to be far enough out from the tower that the dish when it turns or adjusts it doesn't contact the tower. So I'll have to make that calculation as well and see how much distance I have to make on those horizontals. Hmm, that's it. That's all we gotta do. It's a beautiful evening. All right, guys. So that's what that looks like. And uh, this is what it draws out as. So basically you've just got a piece of tubing cut to a specific size and, uh, and we kind of go from there, right? Like so. Well, not exact. It might not bulge out in the corners like that. <laughs> anyway, total length is 2.55. So that's from this lip to here is 2.55. There is also that little, um, little lip down the bottom there. Now we can, what we can kind of do actually is we can cut the total distance and then add a plate on the bottom and that would be our lip or we can just cut the distance which would be let's just say that that lip is right internally here okay on the inside that distance from here to here is uh, let's see 2.44 so like I said, we could just cut a 2.44 uh, piece of tubing and we can just add a plate at the bottom for the bottom, drill a hole in case moisture gets in and wants to get out of there. But I think what we'll first do is we'll first bore that down 2.44. Well, actually we'll, we'll, we'll bore it longer. We'll probably bore it 2.6 and then cut the top off until it's 2.44. Does that make sense? That means we don't have to be so accurate with our boring. We just have to be accurate with our final measure when we're parting it off. Uh, what else we got? Um, 
Oh yeah, the so basically the the inner diameter. So that's from here, right from the inside walls, not the outside walls, the inside walls, inside the diameter is 1.435. That's our inside diameter. That's what the mast will fit into, into this sleeve. Um, it also has some holes in it, roughly here. Um, I'm not worried about those right now. I'll measure those later on when it comes to the final. Those will be the last thing we do is drill these holes. So that distance will be from here to the center of this hole. That'll be a specific distance. And that's where we'll center uh, mark and then drill. And that hole is uh, 0.5 one five or 33 60 fourths all right so how is this for confusing <laughs> all right let's start down here at the bottom we gotta cut some we gotta cut some angle iron <clears throat> the dish is 24 cents or 24 inches in diameter so the um, radius is 12 so we got to cover 12 inches basically minimum 12 inches away from the tower for that dish to clear the tower uh the tower itself we need 16 inches here to here Does that makes sense this is the tower if you hadn't guessed already <laughs> 16 inches to clear plus at least 12. so that gives us uh what's that give us 28 inches and i'm gonna say Let's just err on the side of caution and give another six. I don't, we probably don't need it, but we'll give it a little bit of stick out that way. So 28, six, 34. So from here to here, 34, here to here, 18, or here, 16. Pretty clear, huh? Same with the top one. Um, the vertical, the upright, the distance between the braces. Look at that brace. That's a very poor brace job, whoever did that. Uh, exactly the scale. The braces, uh, top of the brace to the top of the brace is, uh, what did I write down here? 18 inches. That makes sense. Yeah, sure that does. 18 inches between the braces, here to here. So we got to cover that for sure. Plus four inches of stick up. We'll give it a little bit of stick up for our, for our piece. Okay, here we are at the lathe. We've got about a four inch piece. I'll sit us in there. Uh, we'll, nope, we'll go fit. So it sits kind of reasonably flush. Right, we've got that turned down to size. I believe so. Anyway, let's double check it and wherever I put that. Let's put that in the same spot be easier, huh? Let's see what we got. We are looking for 1.43. And we got one point. We're looking for 1.43. <laughs> you guys see that? We're looking for 1.435. And there it is, 1.433, so almost 1.444. 1.434, there it is. So we were one tenth, sorry, one thou off. So here is the Starlink tripod base. So what we need to do now is replicate these holes. I don't know that we need to replicate this little um, kind of countersink. So if I was looking for these holes and I wanted to guess what the center is of these holes, because we'll have to center, 
I would say, well, I guess I'd say right there, 0.5565. We'll leave that on there. That would be my guess as to where the center of that hole is. <clears throat> because I can, because you can if you want to, you can do the math on it, right? You don't have to guess, you can do some math. So the hole diameter is 517, sorry, 0.517. Divide that by two gives you the radius, which is 0.2585, is that right? Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> 0.2585 and 0.2585 again your radius then your measurement from here to this edge the inside lip basically the outside of the inside lip is 0.282 that then gives you your center so that's what is that 5 10, 14, 5, point five, four, zero, five. And mark it, and we'll drill it, and I'll show you how to drill it, and to be reasonably, I mean, here's the thing too, right? If you take this pipe and you drill it just off center, all of a sudden, these holes, which are on center in the pipe, and your buttons, they won't line up. So you've got to be center on the pipe, going all the way through, centered. Can't be off the side. All right, so this is how we're going to do it. Just a tip. Take it for what it's worth. Do it whatever way you want to do it. This is how I do it. Unfortunately, with all, you know, with all the other <laughs> highly technical ways of doing things, I do this a fairly low-tech way. So I've already made my mark. That was the distance I was looking for to center. I've got a centering bit chucked up. This is my old 1940s drill press. Um, got a bit of movement in the quill, but not to worry about that. I've got this purposely, I've got it also in a, a, in a, a vise and a drill press vise or milling vise. It's probably not a very good milling vise. And I've got a, just a feeler gauge, whatever this is, a 10, 10 thou feeler gauge. <clears throat> so what I do, I say I've got this purposely, be gentle here with you, I've got this purposely moved off center. So what happens is, I'm just gonna double check that. Yeah, I'm right where I wanted to be. I'm just in line, I was just checking to see if I was in line with that line there. So I'm gonna take this and lay it on here. Now, if we're in the center of the pipe, this should also not sit here, it should not sit there, it should sit level. I mean, you could really get down to it and be a lot more accurate, probably. I measure the distance here to here and here to here, and if they're the same, then it's perfectly level. I think your eyeball is probably good enough to tell the difference on that. Don't press too hard, just lightly touch it. There. See what I'm saying? So now what you're going to do is, let's just try to bring it close. Close to the middle of the pipe. I'm going to say there. I'm going to line it up again with my line that I wanted, my center point of the line I want to drill. Close is pretty good here. The hole's pretty big. And it, the hole is not going to be perfect tolerances. I'll put this down and note, and note if it's level. And it's pretty close, but it could go a little bit that way. Double check it. And if that's in level, then you're drilling in the center of the pipe. 